Good afternoon, Ruben. Good afternoon, Richard. Um, should we start with the news from Wednesday about what's happening at the end of the season? The talks the club said they had with you, how did those play out? Oh, well, well, it was a very, it was a very simple one. After the Brighton game, they communicated me that I have a meeting on Monday morning, so I came on Monday, and then we have a chat for an hour, hour and a half, and then uh, they communicated me that uh, we will not continue the relation after my contact expires, and yeah, as simple as that. Was the decision already made then before you had those talks? Did you have any? opportunity to pitch your own case for the job? Oh, after uh, two months ago, I I had a, a chat with them when I exposed uh, what I will do in case that I will stay in any scenario. They already know my thoughts and uh, the process was for them and the decision was for them. So it was that two months ago and uh, meanwhile uh, it has been nothing more. So they have their own process that I don't know about it and then they communicate with me on, on Monday. How do you feel after those discussions? Uh, well, um, listen, I did uh, as much as I can. I show here every weekend with you. I make the team being competitive. We didn't get the football, the result that uh, we expected to have. I think you saw an identity. You saw a team that want to play together. We didn't make it. So I try to put everything every time with this solid mentality that we talk. And in that part, I'm, uh, I did my best. And uh, that's the reality. I cannot change the decision from, from the owners. I still think I'm ready, but it's not my call. And uh, yeah, my, my feeling right now is just to finish the, in the best way possible to prepare the Liverpool game. And then on Monday, we will think about something different. Yeah. I spoke to James Walkhouse and Carl Walker-Peters this week, and they were very complimentary about you. They've really enjoyed working under you, it would seem. Ultimately, did you not do you feel like you maybe didn't have enough time to mould this team as you completely wanted it to look? Would you have changed anything? Well, you know, Jordan always said that he didn't lose a match. He was just run out of time, so we can apply a little bit of the same. Uh, yeah, of course, with more time and uh, with uh, probably a transfer window, I think it, w it would be in a different end. But uh, we are not here to make excuses. We should get it uh, with uh, all the tools that we had when we took the team. And we failed on that. Uh, we didn't fail uh, because we keep and show some identity. We put some of the process uh, right again, and then we show some of the of the things that we want, but we didn't make it. So yeah, we ran out of time, uh, but again, we should be able to do it with the time that we that we got. Do you have anything lined up? Do you want to stay in England? Yeah, of course. I would like to stay here, and I would like to stay in the, in the top level that I can stay. And if it's not Premier League, it's very close to that. So my my target has been always to be competing against the best and with the best and that's what I am, that's what I have been the last three months and I want to be here back and uh, I want to fight myself uh, back uh, to be back uh, as quick as possible. We understand Russell Martin will eventually come in, yet to be confirmed of course, but what do you make of the squad that he's going to inherit? Um, have you been involved in any conversations over the last few months about what some of the senior players might do, for example, like James? No, I just uh, I just make my opinion of all of them as a, as a squad, as, as an individual players. And uh, as long as I know, I don't know who is the elect, who is the new coach. Uh, you maybe probably know that better than me, but it's actually it's not for me. And uh, I just told the club what I think. Uh, I told before that this week uh, what I think is uh, what we need to do to rebuild the squad for the championship or for the Premier League in that time if we stay. Uh, so they know my opinion, but uh, they, they can do with, uh, with that what they want. Just finally from me, um, it's, uh, has it had any effect on preparations for Sunday? What does this game mean for you now, knowing the club know that relegation is secured, that you're, you're going to be moving on? So what does it mean for you? Because the fans will want something like, well, well, I, a relative high, won't they? Yeah, listen, uh, I think it's a game against Liverpool and any day we will take that game against Liverpool and we will try to be competitive and they will try to show that uh, we actually are Premier League level, all of us. And for me, it's exactly the same. So I will prepare the game, I prepare it and I will prepare it in the same way as we did it, of course, with uh, some of the details a little bit different from the rest of the weeks because we need to take care about a lot of things. But we are going to go there and we are going to compete as, as good as we did against Brighton, for example, that everybody thought that we were there and, they, and we were prepared. We almost equalized the game. We had the, best, the first chance of the game and we were competitive. So that's what we are going to do it. And then it's the last game of the season 
of uh, in a Premier League for Southampton. Hopefully, the club will be back uh, quick, and in around one year they will have again uh, Premier League matches. And hopefully, I will too. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what is the the biggest priority, the biggest thing the club needs to do, in your opinion, to bounce straight back into the Premier League? Well, uh, that's uh, difficult to say because right now it's not part of my competences. As you can understand, uh, I think the best thing that they need to do is to analyse what is in the house and then make the correct decisions in terms of uh, players and staff uh, and keep with the people that want to carry on and want to put this team back again in the Premier League. Um, Talk about uh, Liverpool, how impressed have you been with them over the last 10 games especially, I suppose? Well, I think I've been impressed with Liverpool over the last seven years with Jurgen Klopp. Uh, I think he has been one of the big references in Europe uh, from the Genger pressing that he practiced when he came uh, to a team that was uh, fighting to be in the top to a team that is fighting for the titles and won Champions League and has been winning the league, uh, the Premier League after I think 30 years, a couple of years ago, four years ago. Uh, I think the, the season didn't start in the best way for them, but uh, he just made some changes in the way that he approached the game and his team uh, with this uh, mobility of Alexander Trenarnol into the middle and uh, different variation looks again uh, as a very, very solid Liverpool. So it's not a surprise they are a reference in Europe and Jurgen is a reference in Europe for, for all the coaches. To play against them on, on Sunday, what have you been looking for from your players in training this week? Well, we have an idea how to go the, how to go and how to try to beat them. We know it's a team that is very dynamic and it's a team that with all these tactical movements that they are doing now, it's uh, dangerous uh, if you can see big spaces and then also with the counter pressure, they are very quick closing frontal or, or lateral. So we have been working in our structure, how solid we can be and then in how we can hurt them in the counter attacks or also in open play. And then obviously at the end of the game, it's sort of goodbye for the season and, and goodbye to the club from you. How do you hope you will be remembered by the fans here? Well, I didn't think about it. I hope they will see a person that tried to give everything for Southampton Football Club that didn't make it, but the, the fort and uh, the honesty was always there. And it was try to be always a forward mindset uh, to face every single problem, to never hide and to try to, to give them the very best. And we didn't. So. Uh, what everybody will think about that, it's for them, not for me. Thanks, Thank you. What, what do you hope, just going on from that point, what do you hope from the fans and the atmosphere on Sunday? Because although you're relegated, sunshine will be out, it's Liverpool at St Mary's. It would be nice, wouldn't it, if everybody was in a positive frame of mind? Yeah, I think, uh, I think again, you need to choose in which mode you are uh, every day and then I think uh, I think the fans need to do the same. I think I know I understand the disappointment of the season, uh, but as you say, it can be the sun shining and then a big opponent. Uh, last game in St Mary's in the Premier League this year. We will not have it for a, for at least one more year, and I think it's a, it's a good opportunity to go and enjoy together and try to make a good football match and then try to give for them some good vibes and uh, hopefully we will be there. And uh, I thank you for the. For the for our fans to be supportive uh, in the hardest one of the hardest seasons that they had in the last 12 years, and uh, hopefully we can have a good environment on Sunday, and then we can make something together. Does it help that Liverpool can't make the Champions League now? Do you hope you get them 10% lower? Well, uh, it's always a tricky question because uh, I know Jurgen said that he will make some changes also in the lineup, probably, and uh, it's a situation with uh, less pressure than if they were playing for the Champions League, of course. But sometimes less pressure means more freedom, and sometimes more freedom means some more chaos in the game, and they can go in uh, both directions. So it's just a different game. There's a couple of players, senior players, who haven't been offered new contracts yet, who are out of contract. One of them, Theo Walcott, of course, a Premier League great player for many years. It's two spells at the club. And the other one, Moy Elianusi, who splits opinion from supporters. Um, what would you say about those two if this is them leaving the, the, the door? I think uh, Moy and Theo are the professionals with big letters, with capital letters. Are players, honest players that give everything for, for Southampton, gave everything and will give everything until the very end that uh, football-wise we can talk about abilities, qualities and ways to play, but definitely they are a team that every team should consider to have in their dressing room 
because they just make the team better and make the place a better place to be and they will always compete with the heart for for everybody and for the for the for the club so i think they should look at it in that way just finally from me for this season uh talking about giving all and what people like and don't like when i look back at the whole season one of the things i've said is maybe the balance between worrying about what we're doing without the ball compared to what we're doing with the ball has been too much towards without the ball this season because in the last few seasons they've conceded a lot of goals but what do you think about that over the course of the whole season, the balance of with and without the ball? and how? Well, um, I don't want to go too much into the, into the other periods. I can tell you for myself. So we have, when we have a plan, we talk about uh, against the ball because, we, because precisely we, we try to don't concede, but we work, uh, we work all aspects of the game. And then we also have a plan when we are in possession, uh, sometimes uh, better executed or sometimes a better plan than other times. But uh, I don't think it, it has been a big part. I think that because if you remember some of the games, like the game we have against Manchester United or the game that we have against Tottenham or the game that we have against Chelsea, uh, we, have, uh, we have been solid in possession. Uh, even the game against West Ham, we were solid in possession. We didn't find the connection in the final third. Uh, I, I don't think in, in that way. I think in that about, uh, more, about, uh, more about the importance of the moment of the game, about how we can make uh, different solutions in the, with the same problems. Uh, so for me, it was more about that. Thank you. Thank you. Let me move on to the section 10.30 this evening. So we can picture of high river. Just to bring it forward a little bit, is there any injury news for the final game of the season? Is Tino fit? Is he, can he play from the start? Uh, no, Tino cannot play from the start uh, because we have this uh, restriction with the time. But uh, uh, he can play at least the same amount of minutes as he played against Brighton. Uh, so Sally, Juan, Armel, Romain and Shea are out of the squad. Uh, we have Polo Noachu doubtful with uh, problems in his back and the rest of the squad is available. And just as Adam said, Slams are looking like they are going to move more possession based next season. Do you think that's the way to go? Do you think that fits in with your principles as well? Uh, well, it's not for me to decide or to speculate about uh, what the club will do it. Uh, with my principle is to have a team that can be competitive with and without the ball, and that's what I will always uh, go. So it's not for me really to, to evaluate that. In those discussions, uh, did you manage to speak to Jason Moorcock? Obviously, he doesn't start for a few weeks, but he's been an influence in the last couple. Uh, well, I speak with Jason uh, a couple of times in the last two months. Uh, we have a couple of good talks, and uh, the influence is not for me, of course. We were discussing about the real situation that we have right now, so not any influence, just uh, good talks. Uh, I think he's a good professional and uh, I think the club is looking forward to have him in the house. It's been a learning period for everyone in the last couple of months especially. Has your own confidence suffered in a way? My own confidence? Yeah. Well, uh, I always had the vibe that I can come and compete against the best in the world. I think I compete against the best in the world. I didn't get the result that I want, but my confidence is that I did it. I, I have always... a. a a team ready to compete against any team. I think a lot of things uh, went in a different way that we won, but we saw that uh, how can we compete? Uh, we saw how we can how we can uh, work with a team for a full week, how we can work with a professional, how we can have an identity. So, of course, I expected to win more football matches, uh, but my conf my confidence is that I did it and I can still do it. Svali, looking at the culture around the club now, do you think it's right now to, in order to allow the team to go straight back up next season? Well, that's a tricky question from you, Echo. Uh I think, uh, of course, at the end of the season, with uh, that disappointment uh, not being in the Premier League next year, I think it's a difficult period for the club. I think the club has enough quality in the workers that are now in the working for the club to bounce back quick. And uh, these people has been, some of them has been working really hard for the club for many years and uh, the people coming, I'm sure that they will do it also. So I don't see a reason why they don't uh, keep or improve the culture and then make, it, make the things better. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Afternoon, Ruben. Um, obviously coming to an end of, a, of the season now. It was a season where the team struggled to score goals across the entirety of the campaign, across all three managers. Brought in Paul Nuachu in January on deadline day. Hasn't scored. Why do you think it hasn't worked out with him? 
Well, I think uh, I think sometimes it's difficult to come straight to the Premier League and start to score goals, especially in that position. Uh, so it's some key positions that you need to be more uh, ex more exposed than the others, and that's the number nine position. I think uh, probably the change of the manager didn't benefit him, and we went into some places that uh, we didn't win before, and uh, and that's mainly it. Uh, I think it's. Uh, it's still too early. Usually, when you get a player from the Belgian league or from the French league, unless the team is very structured, uh, they need time to adapt, and that's what happened. So he probably has a different opinion, but uh, that's my opinion. Makes sense, and I guess the the change of manager coming so soon after that transfer window ended changed sort of the the philosophy in some ways of how that January transfer window might have gone. Do you think you would have potentially approached it differently had you been manager? Absolutely. Any ideas about what potentially that would have looked like? Well, we, you know, we are just going to speculate about that. If you ask me if I will do it in a different way, definitely I will do it in a different way. To to speculate about what we will do with kind of players or that, it, it's just I don't think we will go we go nowhere with that question. Makes sense. And you obviously spoke a little bit earlier about time, and time is not something that managers tend to get a lot of these days. I think the Premier League this season has seen the most managers sacked in the history of the competition. Do you, as you take sort of your first steps into management, is that a concern for you, the lack of patience in, in, in world football at the moment? Do you think there needs to be more patience? Uh, not necessarily. I think it is what it is. I think it is what it is. Uh, we talk about the time because obviously from the three managers of the season, I'm the one that uh, didn't have a chance to pick the, any player to, to come in and play or to make any decision about that. And when we arrived, uh, uh, the situation was already there. So that's more about the time that we are talking than, than anything. I think football is football. I think, uh, I think uh, the business is going into the way that when you get relegated, we are talking about a lot of millions of pounds and uh, people suffering and uh, uh, job vacancies because uh, the budget of the club. Uh, and that's a reason why, for example, in the United States, no have relegation, just to keep the economical model and the economical business there. So. No, I think it is what it is, and I think we need to we accept that, and we know it. We just need to find a way to make the things work from the very first day. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, what's the biggest thing you've learned about yourself in this period as manager? Well, I knew before that I don't crack under pressure, and I think I didn't. So that's what the biggest thing I learned in the in the most demanding environment in in football. I think I, I show myself with uh, simply like a simple person, honest and respectful with everything, trying to work very solid every day, trying to do same things when I'm in front of you than when I'm in front of the players or the fans or or in any situation, try to be always straightforward, try to don't hide anything and uh, try to take everything and make the very best of it. And I knew I was capable and, and I think that's what I did. Are there things that you look back on? Have you had the chance already to, since the relegation was confirmed, to have a look back on things you might have changed? Well, it's always things that uh, every time you review a game, for example, you it's always things that you say. Uh, maybe in that moment we need to approach in that way. Maybe in that moment we we need to do it. Maybe that substitution should not should should not uh, is not the the one that I will do it right now if I know the result. Uh, but at the end of the day, those things are just moving forward. So of course I have some moments like that, but. Not in the big picture. Is there a point though where you can perhaps pinpoint where you thought, okay, now it's going to be really difficult? I mean, obviously you took on a difficult job where where Samson were at the time, but is there perhaps a game where you thought, in the, in the game when it, the way things panned out, oh, this really isn't happening for us. It's not going to happen. No, I think it was more the period uh, after the international break. I think until the international break we were uh, competitive and getting some results. We have a good dynamic. Uh, of course, a couple of games that we were not exactly on point, but uh, we have a good dynamic in the Premier League. And I think after that international break, uh, especially after that, uh, the first game in West Ham, when we controlled the game, uh, the trend was not exactly for us there. So I think that was a key moment. One last one for me. Obviously, it's been spoken about already this season with the home form, with only two wins at home. But can you sort of put, put your finger on why that is this, this season? Why is this playing at St Mary's has been so difficult for Southampton? Well, I, I think, uh, as you say, has been the, there the whole season, and, uh, and uh, we, it's so sometimes it's strange because uh, you, as a as a team, uh, you feel more pressure playing at home because the expectation that you generate there, 
And, but it's not only one reason. It uh, has been about the moment that we were in the league, has been about the opposition that we faced, has been about uh, some situations that we can solve. So it was not o o only one, one situation. So it's just to get a little bit more a deep analysis. And I think uh, every team should be able to compete and uh, be a strong team at home. And that, that, that's the basics for the to avoid the relegation and we didn't make it. So we need to, as a club, we also need to analyze probably, we need to find more tools to get our people engaged on the games, to get a better atmosphere and to get everybody there. And that's what we learn. We need to learn also as a club. So it's not only, probably it's not only about places, it's about everybody creating a different environment.